Wow, I hate when I can't find what I'm looking for. It is absolutely frustrating. I still want to look because I know I've just seen what I'm looking for not that long ago. It's big, it's clumsy, it's awkward, and I have no idea where it is. It is really, really, really. What's up YouTube? Today, I'm going to stretch some canvases and take you along with me. I am so frustrated right now. I can't even tell you. I have looked and looked and looked inside this house and I can't find it. Let's go look in the garage. It's not in the house. It has to be out in the scratch. I just recently seen it somewhere and I don't know where. Definitely not in there. Could it be in the shed? I won't see why it would be in the shed. Why could it be in the shed? I never put the stuff like that in the shed. See, I told you, not in the shed. <clears throat> Man, it's definitely cold out here. Um, I'm gonna give up because, uh, well, I don't know where the damn thing is. And I can improvise with some other tools. So, let's go inside. Stretching canvases. I'm not building my own uh, stretchers today. We'll do that some other time. Just gonna use these little store-bought um, ones. Be fine for today. So, what you're gonna need, obviously, gonna need stretchers so we've got I've got a couple down in the shop and a couple up here the other obvious thing you need is actual canvas you can buy this stuff at the uh, art store usually sometimes uh, they can cut it to size so if you want um, 56 inches wide that's probably what some of the rolls are or 60 um, and you need six feet of it they can cut it for you other things you're going to need. You're going to have to prime up the um, canvas. Recommend gesso. Seals it in. It's kind of a chunky paste. It is good um, for absorbing uh, so the canvas won't eat up your paint. You can use this on paper also and uh, you can actually use it in creation of art. Gesso. You're also going to need a brush. This is just some stupid brush I picked up at the hardware store, a couple bucks. Um, it lasts forever if you wash it out real nice. You just need something to be able to grab a whole bunch of gesso and scoop it on. And you need a stapler and some staples, uh, not endorsed. Uh, go with a heavy duty stapler. You're gonna have to get some scissors, cut the canvas or a knife, whatever. Um, Instead of stapling, you can do the old-fashioned way with the um, hammer and upholstery tacks. That is a pain. I would not recommend it. Spend the 20 bucks on a good stapler and do it that way. The other thing you're going to need is a T-square. So you want to get the corners 90 degrees no matter what. Uh, I normally use a uh, carpenter's uh, square, um, it's just a piece like this and then a piece coming off it, um, it's solid, uh, there's no little give here because this works but it, having a longer piece um, to do that is so much better. If you don't have that, most rooms in your house the corners are going to be 99.9 .9 on a 90 degree angle um, maybe with a small variation but you can use that to line up your pieces let's go and 
move everything down into the shop and we'll see you there. Bye. All right, welcome to the shop. Not much to say about it. I've got these, um, you can find these stretcher bars anywhere, uh, Fredericks. They're kind of cheap. Uh, they're a couple bucks, you know, three, four if you're getting into long ones. Um, they're pine, they will warp if you put too much pressure on these things. Um, I prefer making my own. I'm still not set up to do that in the new place, so. And for small things, these are just fine. Uh, I won't recommend doing your larger canvases with these. First thing you wanna do, so obviously different sizes, so I just kinda put them all, all together. You get them approximately 90 degrees. So that this is the uh, 10 side here. I'll just put the other 14 on. And you can see that these are a little too far in, so you just kind of mess with them. Easy peasy. Don't want to talk too much more about it. Put it on the table, and let's get uh, squaring this off, because it is definitely not square. Let's start working on getting this squared up. If you look right here, it's definitely not square. Usually I like to get the long ones as square as possible. I just kind of push them up and I move it to the next one and this one is not quite right either. So that goes down a little bit. Make sure you apply pressure right there. If you're doing it the T-square, Again, it would be easier with the uh, carpenters. I don't like how this corner is a little gap, but it doesn't matter too much as long as it's square over the length. Now just keep going back and forth until I'm confident it is all square. There. Not too bad. So the edge is right here. You want to put it so it flips all the way over to cover the wood. Sometimes you go a little more, whatever, who cares. But you don't want it just to be at this edge. You want it to wrap all the way around because like commercial canvases, they nail on here. It's no good. You want to nail on here. So this side is pretty good. I can move that in here. And I'll be trimming here and on the bottom half. You can eyeball it at about right there. If you have a little extra, you can always trim it down. No big deal. And I'm using a pretty uh, thick duck canvas. Um, I used to use a little cheaper one, but it just tore and it's no good. All right, they sell these fancy little pliers in the art store called canvas grabbers or canvas stretchers or something like that. Don't waste your money. Because you can get this, you don't want this super tight right now because when you gesso it, the pores of the canvas will tighten up and it will be as tight as a drum after you gesso it. So we want it fairly tight, but hand tight is good enough. Uh, another, another golden rule you want to abide by is I always start with the, when you're stapling, I always start with the middle of the largest one. And if, you're, if this is a bigger canvas, you want to do a couple 
tacks right away here. Then you bring it down to this side, fold it over a couple tacks here. And then you'll go to the short side. Tack, tack. And then you go in opposite corners. So you'll tack here, tack there, tack there, tack there. And on a bigger one, you'll do more tacks, but on the small one, you won't necessarily need it. You want to tack here, here, there, and there. And then we'll talk about how you tuck these corners because uh, there's many ways to do it. I have my way and I think it works pretty slick. So let's just go in and do it. I, if you got them, use some safety glasses. All right, let's, let's get going. I'm gonna just put a couple in here. Probably only need two, and this is gonna fucking. All right. Let's see if I can get through this video here. So you're gonna want to pull. You're gonna want to pull. You, know, it's, you can see a lot of craggies yet, but pull so it's hand tight. All right, let's spin it. Pull it tight again. And this one, I'm just gonna do one on this side. Pull it tight. Staple. Other corner. Pull. Staple. All right, it doesn't matter which uh, corner on the towel side you want to do. To start thinking about which side I want the seam on. So you can either. This painting is probably going to be a portrait um, style, so that means up and down is how it's going to hang. Um, so I think I want this little seam to be on the bottom and then on the top. So what you want to start thinking about doing is it's kind of like gift wrapping. You want to shove this little piece in there. So you want the bottom half to be actually over the top half. That way you can definitely have that. But right now, this I'm going to staple right there, but I'm not going to tack down this piece. the opposite corner, do the same thing. Back to this corner here. And one more this corner. All right, let's really get this corner in here. You can cut away some of this excess fabric if you want, and I think I'm going to do that. Just take a little bit of this corner out just to get rid of some of that excess fabric. So you just kind of want to take it and tuck it and 
pull it so it's as even as possible. And this time you're gonna go through both pieces of canvas. So this side and this side. After I get that one down, I usually tack a couple more. And now you can see this corner. It's a little bulge there, not too bad. And it's wrapped very nicely. Some people will just do a nice little wrap all the way down this way, and I think that's kind of ugly, so I don't. So again, this side's done. Go to the opposite corner and uh, proceed there. I'm going to cut a little bit of this corner off again, especially on small canvases. It is a little more beneficial to do. Tight. So again, just kind of tighten that up around that corner and nail her down. Now it really doesn't matter which corner, either or, I don't care. And if you feel like you don't have enough staples somewhere, just again, pull, grab, staple. Mine's good. You can see, it's not like a tight drum, but uh, and you can see wrinkles yet, but that will all come out. So let's move to the next step. All just so it's a little different. Sometimes you want to stir it up, sometimes shake it, whatever works. It's all good. Uh, this stuff's pretty stable, so uh, I'm just doing it as is. So the key to priming canvas right, have a nice brush. doesn't have to be expensive, but make sure it's not a brush that's going to lose a lot of bristles, because otherwise you'll get bristles in here and you have to pull them out and then re redo it. Next thing to keep in mind is you want to start in the middle. Start in the middle. We're going to do pretty much the same kind of configuration. Start in the middle, work our way out one way, work our way out the other way, work our way from this side to this side. What's gonna happen is the canvas is gonna start to tighten up in the middle. It's gonna pull everything in, and as you work your way out, it's gonna make this really taut. So let's do it, let's do it. And then, of course, do one corner, other corner, other corner, other corner. Just like we staple. There you have it. Perfectly done. First coat. You will want to do more than one coat because you will not get every little little nick and cranny in here. Plus you want to build up a couple layers so the tooth of the oil paint or the acrylic paint will get into the gesso. Um, just watching paint dry. So as soon as this is dry, light sand, do second coat, same kind of pattern. Start from the middle, work your way to the ends, and then do the corners. Let dry. If you feel like you need it, and you probably should, do a third coat. Three coats I feel are the best. It depends on the actual gesso you're using and the kind of ground you want. So make sure you experiment and figure out what's best for you and your art. Just because it works for me doesn't mean it works perfect for you.
Just do it. Do you realize you're watching me paint a canvas white? That's what you just did. Subscribe. Okay, every time I try to make a video, this guy decides he wants loves. Good boys. Yeah, there's his famous tail, Rory's tail. Alright, dude. Dude. Oh. This is schnuzzles.